Hey guys, Fat Buddy Cat back again. All right, next is going to be the OMBWarehouse.com uh, CT200 torque converter plate. Um, we're going to paint be painting this, so I'm going to go out and I'm going to put probably a coat of uh, black primer and then a couple coats of this uh, high heat grill paint. Um, I just like to go with like a satin black on these something neutral uh you know oil and stuff like that won't show up as easy and this paint is pretty resilient so i'm gonna go ahead and do that and like i showed you before you guys can polish these up and uh throw like a coat of clear on them something like that works really well too uh so i'm gonna go do that and we'll get back to the bike all right all right guys we got it all painted up, looking sweet. All right, uh, now comes the hard part, all right? We gotta get that plate on this motor onto this bike. Uh, here's what I'm going with. If we have the chain involved, it's gonna help us get this thing straight but we know the edge of this plate is straight i know the edge of this plate should be parallel to these holes here okay so i'll take that measurement and as long as that's the same then we're going to use these as a bit of a guideline all right so the first thing we have to do is get this motor mounted up on the plate this comes with different size hardware here and on these we're going to be using the longer ones all right because this just has to pass through the plate and the bottom of your uh, stock plate which isn't much so uh, what I think I'm going to do is put the motor on the plate all right i'm going to set diagonally like that so that it can't really move you know we're going to be taking this off and on so let's try that uh something else that i noticed that you might be able to try is these holes are for say like a clone or a predator 212 are the same as these holes down here right so we could maybe line up just where the motor would be straight with the chain you catch what i'm saying guys and we mark those holes okay technically that would work too because that would be these here okay and those line up with these up top all right so uh, um i know that the motor holes line up with these and we know that the plate holes line up with those so i mean it's safe to say that we can use this for a jump off point set our measurements guys to mark these out because we're going to mark them right out we're not just going to guesstimate we're going to we're going to do this right all right i got i got a framing square over there i got a big framing square over there i got a big 12 down there um so we got all, all kinds of different methods for this. All right. So we got our drill ready, safety gear. Uh, I'm going to get the engine on that plate. We'll get it down there and we'll see what we can do. All right. All right, guys. I got the little bug up on the jack here um, just to make things easier. And this has never really happened. And... It's kind of a coincidence, maybe, but I had mentioned 
at the beginning of this build that the plate was different than the other one on the other doodle bug and i got this pretty much lined up and i'm ending up with like a half inch exact on this side and i'm talking a skosh i mean you could pretty much center it on a half inch up front and i'll show you yeah about a half inch it's i just never had anything really center up like that thought that was kind of cool um so anyways what i did obviously i didn't cut the chain uh i went with the front of the plate with the bar that goes across the welds aren't really in the way they're clean it's straight um so i just went all the way forward with my motor um if you look back here we're pretty much parallel to the corner of the plate i mean if you look at those eyelets I mean, they're pretty pretty dang close all right but you see the other ones that's where our holes are going to be all right so i think i can actually reach in and mark those two all right and then i'll just transfer it to the front and we're going to do slots all right let me show you what we got see that's that's pretty dang straight you know it's straighter if i pull the front tight but i can't really while well, i'm holding it but that's pretty straight guys and we can also do that washer trick uh there might be some adjustment when you're tightening your motor down because we're going to have slots forward to back you know like if our holes are a little on the uh you know heavy on the gratuitous side then we can uh we can get a little bit of a diagonal movement you know on our lineup so you know we hope for straight but we'll see what happens so anyways that's where we're at and this is exactly why see how i'm not tight here but i'm making sure everything's everything's sandwiched in there everything's where it's gonna go right so well what i'll do is if this is close enough we'll set it boom we'll set this and then we're going to set our front driver okay in all likeliness i'm guessing two shims and a spacer uh maybe a spacer uh washer and two shims something you know that's if you do it right you can get some of that that clang 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 noise out of it so you know we'll see what happens but uh I'm going to get in there with my marker and I'm going to mark Let me get in focus. I'm going to mark those two holes on the back of this plate. You know, that one and that one. Okay. So I'll mark those and then uh I'll show you how we transfer them to the front so that the motor sits nice and straight and parallel. All right. See you in a little bit, guys. All right, boys and girls, here's what we got. So, you know, I had taken a marker and marked the center for the two back holes. All right. And then I know that these are parallels. All right. So then what I did was measured from the edge of this to the center of that one. Okay same over here and I got the same measurement all right so I knew I was finding a uh, you know that's gonna be our new center all right so what I did was transfer that over to here you know the same thing up front all right and then I checked from this center to this center and made sure that my centers were the same okay they were pretty close to four and an eighth inches all right so once I did that 
I went back and our bolts are going to be using these bigger slots. These little ones don't work. And these bigger slots are a quarter inch. So I measured an eighth to each side and laid out my my um, my channels, say. Now we're awfully close on this side. Alright. Um I might just cheat it this way a little bit. Um, you know, and then how we left our torque converter loose here, we know that we can flop the washer, you know, so we can get at least, you know, a sixteenth more away from that, these holes over here. Uh, so, you know, I guess what I'm going to do is figure out how I'm going to get these done. My idea is I'm going to start drilling a center hole for the uh, the channel, all right? And then I'll measure to how far we have to go, and that'll tell me how many holes I have to make. And then we'll just go around and clean up the edges with something. All right, that's the plan, guys. I'll, uh, I'll see what happens. If there's any changes, I'll get back to you. Okay, friends, here we go. Uh, this is what I got. All right, this is not beautiful. Um, could this be better? Yes. Uh, if I were doing this for some sort of a show bike, I would use a new plate. Um, I would have taken a piece of steel, and welded right over this, the whole thing. And then laid out my holes. Alright guys, so again, here we are with the things can be fixed. You know, this can be reversed. I mean, look how look how close we are up there. And we got some steel, but you see how it got away from me? And all that was is there's a weak point somewhere and it just, you know, bent and that was it. But um, how I got these holes somewhat in a shape besides just round like that lots of that guys lots and lots of that uh, i think these were between six and i think i had like almost eight holes to make the back ones uh do these even work yeah heck yeah they're gonna work we got plenty here um i know that the front we should be good yeah, we should get we should get about an inch out of this, maybe maybe a little more. Um, these we didn't have to go back quite as far, but it's strong. It's not going anywhere. And like I said, guys, it's all fixable. So we're not worried about this. I mean, honestly, what I would do if I want to perfect this, or decide you know, or this is an issue. And this is just thinking while I'm talking, guys. This is what I mean about my OCD. I'm, I'm just running with thoughts, dudes, all the time. Uh, look at, like, cut. What if I left, like, a box? You know what I'm saying? Just where, look where my lines are. You know, but what if it was, like, an inch? You know, and I just leave a box the whole way around, right? And then cut the whole dang thing out. Blah jam, you know? Transfer, you know, obviously transfer my these marks, you know, onto my plate, but then just blop that right out. Plate on top, weldy weld, weldy weld, weldy weld. Stronger than heck, guys. You know, so I'm not afraid to do things like that. So maybe, um, you know, I might even, you know, actually, I think I am going to look into. You know, I'll get this mounted up. We'll get this thing working. And I think I'm going to look into seeing if I can get a template. And, uh, have a guy. No, I got a uh, guy who's got a machine shop. And I'll have him cut me out some perfect, you know, mounts for this thing. So, mounting holes, whatever you want to call them. But, uh, you know, that's what we're working with. You know, another option, guy. I could... Put a little piece of uh, 
plate. I mean, even, even easier guy. Little piece of plate right up under here. Weld around it. Stick, you know, just patch it in. Bada bing, bada boom. Not worried. Let's get this thing on. All right. Let's see what happens. Uh, I got the engine off the plate. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and mount it right up on the plate, guys. All right. I'll get back to you on that. All right, crew. Here we are. Um, we got the motor just sitting on there. I have three of the nuts loosely on. The plate is secured to the motor. The torque converter plate secured to the motor. The back pulley is loose. Um, remember we talked about cheating this up here. Um, and when I did that, we had to use the old washer trick I showed you guys. All right, so we're all the way inboard on our washers. And that's given us our our space out here all right we got nice chain alignment all right come bring it back here we're nice and straight oh. see all right um something that worked out on this this doodle bug did not work out on the other one uh the other tensioner is further forward guys this one is further back. I used the uh, Baja Doodle Bug Idler Wheel. These are from OMB Warehouse. These are like $18, but guys, these are worth it. They last for a long time. They have ball bearings in them. Uh, what I did is there's a small washer that's up against the, the bearing, but not both traces. And then it's got the uh, a little spacer, just like a little three quarter inch spacer. All right, then the wheel. Then on the other side, it has two small washers, a bigger washer, and a nylock nut. Okay, and so no matter how tight we make this, this is going to spin free. All right, guys, because we're not squishing those bearing traces. All right, I mean, obviously, if you torque the heck out of it, it ain't going to spin, but you can really get some some good torque on there. Uh, plus, we have the stock adjuster, which works great. Um, as of right now, we still have room to move forward. As you can see, there's still room in front of these nuts here. I'm going to pull this back just a little bit before I set my chain. Uh, this is going to be our temporary solution for this here. Um... This will sandwich plenty of steel, as you can see, it'll cover. You know what I mean? That's perfect, guys. You really don't have to do anything more than that. That will work fine. Um, I probably will at some point, but not right now. Okay, so what I'm going to do is cut uh, one side of this washer flat. Okay, I'm going to do that. I'm just going to stick it in the vise, in the vise and I'm going to cut, you know... A flat side on it so that when it's up here we can come all the way forward and not bottom out on this lip here all right guys um in the future something i might do is mark out my four predator holes just holes guys not slots all right and get a piece of steel um take these washers out all right i'm going to sandwich a piece of steel up there and then set my bolt and it'll just sandwich up against that whole thing uh and then there if you make that plate wide enough i can make holes through it on this all right and i can make sets for it so that the engine can't move you see where i'm going pretty cool we can do the same thing back here on that lip that's behind the engine plate uh we can put a stop there if we ever have too much torque and it's a it's a it's an issue. I don't find that it's an issue on the other bike. I don't think it's going to be an issue on this bike. So um, this is absolutely great that this worked out. This saves us a lot of time. Um, when we pull this together, okay. Yeah, we're loose, but the engine can go further forward. Um, like I said, we're going to pull it back. I'll pick a link. You know, I'm just going to cut a link out. Maybe I'll show you guys how that works. Um, and then I'll get that cut. So next time you see this, I'm going to should have this tightened up. 
the chain on and then I'll show you how to finish this off. All right, guys? So it's getting easier. I'm gonna go ahead out, whoops, and uh, get that cut. All right, guys, look at this, huh? She looks good. I mean, you wanna see a lineup. Look at that. Look how straight that is. Mmm. There it is, that shadow kind of makes it look like it has a curse, but I don't. All right, so, you know, I tightened that up in the back. We did the washer trick. Uh, we got our chain centered. We got our motor basically centered on the frame. Uh, we got our torque converter installed. We have a usable tensioner, guys. That's a big deal on these. This isn't even set yet. Um, we have plenty of tension on the chain. Uh, I use 420 chain, so we're not going to get a lot of stretch out of this. And what we do get for stretch, I think we're going to take out with that tensioner. That looks cool. Now, I don't know if it's the 196 or what, but that torque converter compared to the other one looks to be at a more extreme angle. But mm, we'll get them side by side. Uh, the other thing that could make that happen is the front rake on this is a little longer. So it might be making it, yeah, I bet you that's what we're seeing. Um, wow, that looks good. So anyways, our motor is pretty much centered. You know, our oil cha our oil drop is right there, so that would be nice. Um, underneath, there's our half moon up here. You know, and all our other ones were in there good and we still have a half inch that we can come forward guys and that allows us to do that um, if that washer were not cut then it, it wouldn't be able to come all the way forward so that'll work that will definitely work all right so um, you know the big advantage we have is our OMB plate here guys that's what makes this possible otherwise you're stacking these things on washers or spacers and you're still not going to achieve this all right you need to get this motor up and over that cross member there all right so i've seen guys mount plates on top of these and do all kinds of things this is the closest thing to no you know fabrication besides cutting those holes in the frame and we did that with just you know our step bit and a file that's it guys all right the tensioner is ready to go i mean i'm so happy about that i'm so psyched that just saves so much time and effort guys so anyways that's this install that's the plate install the chain the sprocket and part of the torque converter. Our next part is going to be spacing this out, all right, so that we can get our belt on straight. And that'll be the next video. All right, guys, see you soon. Yeah, I'll show you from the other side. Oh yeah, she bad. All right, I'll be back, guys. Let me get cleaned up a little bit. All right, guys, <clears throat> I got the rest of our three-quarter inch torque converter in from our friends over at OMV Warehouse. Uh, we had had a mistake where somehow we ended up with a one-inch bore, and less than two days later, here we go, guys. I got a brand new driver, all right? So we have a few different size spacers here. Um, this comes with the comp, because this was the upgraded uh, torque converter that I got this came with the Comet bushing uh, some Of these shims and do, 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 do. It came with two belts. All right, but we're just gonna use the is parts belt I don't know why guys I use those first and then I run the good ones <laughs> Whether it makes sense or not. I don't know all right, so Anyways, this is all mounted up. This is tight. 
our tensioner works, everything's good. Uh, I mean, this thing rolls like nothing, guys. There's nothing rubbing. Uh, you know, I made sure to put the the link on the chain right so that, I don't know if we can see it. Uh, yeah, there's the master link down there. See the direction it's facing, guys? That's so that as it enters the torque converter, if it were to rub against the plate at all, it's not binding and pushing itself off. All right, it would actually be pushing itself on. All right, uh, so that's that. Okay, um, let's get this thing on here, guys. So I believe this medium size one is the stock size that comes with these 30 series. Uh, I kept the bigger one that came with this this motor. This is a uh, you know the JF 200, the motor that came on the Trailmaster. All right, so let's just put that on for measure. And here is our pressure plate. Okay, let's see how we look. Ooh, we are way in, guys. Way too far in. We're not going to shim that. If we were trying to try to shim and washer that, we'd be six deep, eight deep. All right, so we'll take that off. We know that doesn't work. So that's definitely not going to work. And both of these together equals one of these. All right. Let's check it out. That's not bad. I actually think we can come out just a little bit, guys. Let me, uh, let's try our washer. Just a little too much, guys. All right, so I think we're gonna get it with one shim. All right, now some people put their shims behind on the other side. Uh, I find that they tend to get bent that way because this part, I don't know if you can see it, is tapered. And with all the torque from putting it on, you tend to push these in and bend them. And then your spacing is going to be off a little bit. All right. Um, they sell another type of spacer. Here, I'll show you. I forget what they're... It's like the super spacer. All right. And these things are actually made to go on first there see how it's it's like bezeled and beveled whatever yeah see then what that does is these can go right on this way all right these are pricey little son of a guns i don't like to lose those all right so let will try this There it is, guys. That's mint. All right, that's flush. All right, I'll get the belt on, and I'll show you. Now, here's our... bushing. That's the stock bushing, the shi real, real shiny one, guys. I'm not sure if it's zinc or copper or something, but... This is the bronze one. You'll see, if you look closer, some pitting. Uh, it's got some, you know, some marring on it that you can see. All right, so that's your bronze one. You know, just put that right on. And then I might need two hands for this, but I think we all know that the belt goes on one way. Uh, the flat edge 
goes against your pressure plate and the bezeled edge goes against the uh, driver itself. The push plate rubs up against that. Alright, so that's on there. Uh, this belt is kind of, you know, it's, that's a nice lineup. It's hard to tell with this belt. Usually you can kind of push down on them. And when you push straight down, you should have the same gap here as you have here. But this belt is very warped. Uh, that'll come out with a few runs. So, anyways, uh, that's that. Uh, the next thing I'll do is uh, sometimes I'll put like a little bit of blue Loctite on these and then I'll send it home. I'll torque it on. Um, mm, probably just going to put a lock nut or a uh, lock washer on that and tighten it for now. Uh, testing purposes. You know what I'm saying, guys? What if something doesn't work? Uh, the next thing is going to be this blue cover here and I'll go ahead and get my angle grinder set up and I'll show you guys how to cut one out the right way. All right, be right back. All right guys, up next on the doodle bug is going to be putting this here torque converter cover on. All right, uh, so, you know, obviously that's not going to work. Uh, what I like to do just grab a marker. Oh, here's a blue one. Convenient, huh? <laughs> All right. And uh, what I'll do. All right. This one doesn't have the live tensioner. It's stationary, okay? But that's just for now. We're going to, I mean, it's going to work. But, you know, it's always good to make sure. However we can get this thing on there too. Now, I like to leave a lot of room. Something like that, right? And same thing down bottom. There's our chain. All right there. And I come like two inches below it. All right. And then, we look at how far in do we have to go. Probably another couple inches. So we'll make our mark out here. All right, so I'm like two inches from the edge, two inches from the chain on top, and two inches on the bottom. All right, and I'll go ahead and I'm gonna take that out and cut it with the angle grinder real quick all right and I'll show you the results all right guys I got that torque converter cover on and uh, here's what we're left with I went and I just did it with an angle grinder and then I just use a uh, sanding block and I just take down the edges so it's smooth 
but uh you know that's our final result our chain looks good we're nice and straight and our lineup is pretty much perfect our motors where it needs to be you know we got all the advantages of using that plate all right so that's why i use those guys whenever i do my torque converters omb warehouse guys they know what they're doing all right well i'll get back to you guys tomorrow with finishing touches on this bike all right thanks for watching